<laughs> All right, well, greetings. Thank you guys for taking time to answer a few questions with Blow the Scene readers from around the world. Um, let's begin by just having you introduce yourself and declare your onstage weapon of choice with Richmond Thrashers Municipal Ways. Uh, I'm Tony Ferrasa, <laughs> and I scream in the mic all the time. I'm Landfill, I play bass. Awesome. So, you guys have been on the road with Black Tusk since May and picked up with three inches of blood a little over a week ago. How's the tour treated you thus far? Anything particularly memorable with your touring comrades? Uh, we almost died the other night uh, in a car wreck. That was weird. It wasn't, we they were in the car wreck, but there wasn't a wreck, but it was really close and scary. A near miss? Near miss. And then, uh, what we had some really good show, uh, shows. One in Chicago was a total rager and our shows through the west coast were yeah really awesome as most well. of the west coast was, was incredible so, righteous yeah it's really good and, and then, tonight will be really fun too awesome and then this wraps up tomorrow in new york city yeah right we home for home for a week and then we go to europe awesome very cool yeah so busy busy summer for us we'll be there for like two months awesome yeah very cool so we caught up with uh, municipal waste drummer dave witt uh, last october prior to the release of your most recent record the fatal feast and at that time you mentioned how excited you all were about uh, joining forces with nuclear blast now that the record has been out and you've had it's had some time to marinate with fans how do you how do you feel about the response to the record and specifically like on the road you know touring on the material um when we play when we play the songs like people sing along and shit like we do this when we play fatal feast like the whole like front of the crowd everybody like sings along with me awesome. it's got kind of a thing to it and and hearing everybody sing it back it's like fuck yeah like i, I don't think we've there's not a lot of songs that we have that they actually have like a part where everybody like sings along there's shouts you know like parts but yeah so that's i mean i guess that's a good thing that people are digging it and uh our work with the label has been incredible like they're, they're, we just keep, they keep like just going with every idea we have and we actually have a video coming out tomorrow, another one, the third one already. Righteous. Or, uh, yeah, so you know, we love doing videos. So. Well, what song is the newest video uh, going to be for? This is going to be for your cut off. Cool. Yeah, that's like one of my favorite new ones to play. So. Awesome. That's, that, that song gets a really big response, and we haven't even like, done a video or like, you know, we haven't even pushed that song yet. That's yeah, great. Are you guys going to rip that tonight? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Like, awesome. I mean, that's like I think that's going to be a staple for a long time because we really like playing it. Awesome. Yeah. Very cool. Righteous. So, have you guys recalculated your goals as a band having stepped up on Nuclear Blast Records? Do you feel that having a larger label behind you and booking agents, which you obviously had before, you have PR people, with all these mechanisms in place now, does it make it easier to focus on the music? Uh, well, we our writing style has always been the same since the beginning of the band. You know, we've gotten to a point where we work together in a certain way and it's just become sort of like a machine and uh, going to the new label is is great and we've really noticed a difference and it feels really fresh but as far as our writing style we've always really taken our time to write really good music and, and you know in the comfort of our own home you know with each other just hanging out having some beers and stuff right on so I don't think signing to a new label has impacted the writing process but it's, it's funny a lot of people think that too like uh when a band like signs to a label, people think like the band's gonna change. I always got confused by that. You ever notice that? Like, I, I guess even like when we signed, they're like, I, I would see like people be like, oh man, they're gonna suck now because they're on this label. It's like, right? I, I never had a conversation with a label person going, well, you guys, you need to do this sound because it's gonna sell, it's gonna sell a bunch of records. Right. Like, uh, they they know where we're just like, fuck you, like, yeah. we're gonna do this. Yeah. Does it give you more time to focus on, because I would assume like when you guys first started out, you were booking the tours yourself, like it was a very DIY oh, type yeah, of experience, yeah. like having those mechanisms in place, is that, does it make it easier it's, to do what you do? Or? It's just on a bigger spectrum now, but yeah. we're still, as, I think we're as much hands on with this band as we were, I mean, I'm not like printing every shirt like I used to, but right. like, uh, <laughs> I, I mean, we're real hands-on with a lot of this shit. These guys with, with the songwriting, I'm, like as far as the touring, I'm, this tour I was even like on the phone with Booking Agent a lot, like just trying to line up cool local bands and stuff. Like, like your shirt, this, the guy filming the Speed Wolf, they played our Denver show, and uh, Midnight played Cleveland. You know, we we try to line up like bands that we're into to, to open the shows. And, right. So whatever. I mean, that's just an example of like how. 
to try to still be as much hands-on as possible. Absolutely. I don't know if I could just let, like, full control of the band go to, like, somebody else, you know? It'd be, like, weird. <laughs> yeah. All right, cool. So, with such a rich history of releases, and uh, many of which are attributed to um, leading the current thrash revival in the U.S., how do you guys define success at, like, this stage of the game? Um, I think if people just continue to come out to our shows and support us and are happy to hear our music, uh, I think that's a level of success right there. You know, we're happy that people are excited about coming to our shows and, and we're thankful that you know, they're happy. Yeah, we're, I mean, we know we're, we're not going to make a million dollars with this band, you know, like we never really expected that. You know, we're just, we're just stoked to be able to like go out and do what we do and, and be comfortable with it. Like, I mean, for how many years when we started, like, it was, it was you know, pretty hard. Now we got, like, it's, it's, like, a little bit easier, you know. It's still it's still hard to tour, but, I mean, it's it's crazy to, to be able to do this and, and actually be semi-comfortable with it and, and actually be able to play for, like, tons of people all over the world. Like, all over the world, there's people, there's people in Portugal that write us every day about playing there, you know. It's like... That's successful to me. Like that's all right. I give a shit about. Like that's awesome. getting our music out to people. And, and, yeah, exactly. What Phil said, you know, it's just, uh, righteous. People like it. That's success to me. I mean, I'm, I, I know we're not going to be rich ever. <laughs> right on. I don't really care about that. Cool. Very cool. So I remember Tony. You said after uh, there. I remember after the release of the Art of Partying. Um, there was like kind of like a near constant air of expectancy with the band. Like when people met you, they expected you guys to just like throw down like on command and like beer bong and just you know be ready to rage like at the drop of a hat. And um, you know if you guys weren't in that type of mood, that there would sometimes be like backlash. Now with your later releases like Massive Aggressive and now the Fatal Feast has attracted a bit. Has it attracted a bit more of a serious response? from fans I, I know you guys aren't a super serious band but you know I would assume you want the music to be taken seriously because there's a lot of technical you know skill behind it yeah I, I would say I would say like metal critics and, and people like that and more than I, I hate to say industry people or whatever but right. I think a lot I think after after time a lot, a lot more of those people respect us more than I think when, they, when we first were around they kind of just thought we were like a bunch of fuck ups and they realized that we didn't actually take like we write pretty seriously. Right. Uh, kids like aren't, aren't as crazy as they used to be, but we. Knew, I mean, I remember we were gonna put out like, we like when our party was gonna come out. We were like, we we're sitting at practice and we we're like, fuck, man, like, you know, this is opening some floodgates of like possible like punishing shit in the future, <laughs> like you know, you know, the, the party things. And we still rage pretty hard, but it's. It isn't as bad. Like I think more people know that you know we're we're lifers. You know. Hmm. What did the writing process look like for uh, the Fatal Feast? Do you guys, I know you touched on this a little bit earlier, but does everybody in the band actually contribute? And is there kind of like a leader, like a captain of the ship that steers the directions of the songs? And did you guys experiment with any like new approaches for the Fatal Feast? We did experiment a little bit with the approach. For the most part, it'll it'll be mostly me and Ryan cooking up riffs and then bringing them to Dave and then we'll record demos of the songs and then take the demos and give them to Tony and we'll listen to them and, and come up with lyrics. But there were a couple songs on this new record where I just kind of like had a song prepared completely and kind of presented it to the guys and they decided whether or not they wanted to keep it. For, yeah, sometimes you know, it's just more like just cut parts or you know, stuff like that. And, uh, yeah, I guess the last couple of records, uh, a lot more demoing has been going on. We kind of all got a little bit more tech savvy and started learning how to like record ourselves. And he's been working on like he's actually been recording bands and stuff. So that's been real helpful for us to like figure out what we want, you know. And, like this record, we had so many fucking songs yeah. written, and uh, like a lot of the shit didn't make it on the album. But we just we just had a bunch of stuff. We would work, see what worked and what didn't. Right on. Cut a lot of stuff. And, yeah, it worked out cool. Righteous. I like being able to have way more than we need uh, music-wise, so we can just sort of decide whether or not you know certain things should be on there. I don't know. It just it, it yields interesting results. Yeah. Cool. But that's it. That kind of goes back to what you were asking earlier. It's like it's cool to be in a position now to where we can take our time writing and be able to do that. Like usually, like I like, like earlier earache days too. It was just like get 
you know, right, 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 get in the studio, we gotta get this, and then you gotta get, get the recording done so you can go on tour immediately after, and it, it was just like, hectic, and finally like, yeah, being able to be a little bit more comfortable with what we're doing, and, and having more time, is just like, now we're gonna, we're gonna do this, like, this way now, and this is how we're doing it. So, right on, yeah, very cool. Very cool. So I know you guys touched on your up, your upcoming plans a little bit in, in the, earlier in the interview. Um, you have a new video coming out. You're going to head over to Europe. Can you go? Can you give us a little more details about what you have on the slate for the rest of the year? I'm playing with Man of War in uh, Sweden. I just found that out today. Like I forgot about that. So that's pretty cool. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Righteous. Uh, what else? Uh, we got a really cool U.S. tour that. Uh, we got we got coming up that we're probably gonna announce in a couple months that I'm really fucking stoked about. Um, we had the split with Toxic Holocaust that just came out. Uh, what other shit's going on? Uh, well, we got a video dropping tomorrow that's uh, very interesting and very unique for us. It's animated. It's an animated video. Yeah. Oh, cool! Who did the animation? These guys from France. They were, they, they actually just approached me. We want to do this video, and I, I've always wanted to do an animated video and. and uh, we were like, yeah, we didn't like really know, um, and then they sent us like a, like, that was like a maybe 10 second clip of what they had going already, and it was fucking hilarious. We are just like, all right, go for it. And it, it, it might be my favorite video by a long shot. Like it's, it, you gotta watch it a few times. It's <laughs> fucking, there's, there's so much hidden shit, right. and it's really fast paced. And you, I mean, you can watch it and pause, and then look and find it. It reminds me kind of like a, I want to say super jail with just the busyness of it. It, it doesn't look very similar art wise, but uh, like just with and the intense amount of, violence wise. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of yeah, it's a lot of violence. Right on. Did they actually craft the vi the video and the animation they, to the they, song, or did they, they have the nailed them? it, man? Like they right got on. the whole vibe of the thing. It, it, it would have been like. I mean, they even had they even like had reference like inside jokes of ours that like I couldn't believe it. Like uh, we 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 had to make a, a couple adjustments, but usually like most videos we have to re re edit shit like three three or four times because we're so picky. This one was just like take that out. Right. That this is cool. Like it was just so it's it's good. I can't wait until it comes out. It's, I'm awesome. really proud of it. Like, I'm Very cool. About it. Well, awesome, man. Well, we want to thank you guys for taking a few minutes of Blow the Scene readers from around the world. We really appreciate your time and definitely look forward to watching you guys rock out tonight. Thanks a lot. Keeping appreciate up with your future endeavors. So, awesome. Right.